Hello and welcome to Adelux on this new Lutron Homeworks QoS tutorial where I will share with you my experience as a Lutron programmer. The subject of today is addressed to new programmers who start with Homeworks QoS and in this series of tutorial we are reviewing the key documents that are required when you start the commissioning of a new Homeworks QoS system. We will see which information on those documents will really help you completing your first programming successfully. So without further ado, let's do it! So here is the situation. Let's say that you are sent to site to commission and program a Lutron Homeworks QS system for the very first time, and you are not very familiar on how this particular system has been wired or put together and what it involves. But you need, by the end of the day, to have this system running and fully commissioned. So where do you start and what do you need? Well, this is quite straightforward. To start, you will need a lighting floor plan or a load schedule and a wiring schedule. We've already talked about the lighting floor plan and the load schedule in our two previous tutorials and you can check out the links below if you want to see them first. Basically, a Lutron system is made of panels or enclosures that contain different types of modules and the system is only controlling the outputs of those modules. So as a Lutron programmer, I will have to first create the lighting circuits or whatever circuits the Lutron panel is controlling in my Homeworks QS database. Then, I will have to assign those circuits to the correct output on the Lutron panel. In other words, I will have to tell the system where those circuits are physically connected on those modules, so the circuits operate correctly when my programming is finished. And the wiring schedule will be the document that will confirm where those circuits are physically connected on the Lutron panel and therefore makes it the most important document out of the three. But I need to pay attention, because if one morning I get to site where the Lutron panel is already fully wired and I don't have a wiring schedule, I won't really be able to figure out myself how those connections have been made. I mean, I probably could, but that will take a lot of time as first I will have to create the circuits without really knowing what they are, then to randomly assign them to modules. And to finish, I will have to flash each circuit one by one and try to figure out what they are, also hoping that the lighting circuits have bulbs on them so I'm not spending my time looking for something that doesn't exist or can't happen. I mean, trust me, this is a very time-consuming and painful process. As far as I'm concerned, I always ask my client to confirm that the wiring schedule is available Otherwise, there'd be no point for me to come to site as this will significantly increase my client cost for commissioning. So my advice to you is to make sure that you have the wiring schedule when you get to site. The wiring schedule is in general provided by the person who has designed the Lutron system we are about to commission. That wiring schedule will then be supplied to the electrical contractor, for example, for him to complete the wiring of the Lutron panel. So this document exists already, we're not asking somebody to do some extra work for us, that's why it should be easy to get it as long as we ask for it. There are different ways a wiring schedule can look like, and in my programming life I've come across wiring schedule done at the back of a cardboard box to a very fancy Excel spreadsheet, but to me that doesn't really matter as long as it contains the information needed to complete the commissioning. So let's have a look. Here, in our particular example, the wiring schedule represents the wiring of lighting circuits on two different Lutron panels. On panel number one, I've got the lighting for the ground floor and external, and on panel number two, the lighting for the first and second floor. For each panel, I have the number of Lutron lighting module and the type of module. So for example, on my Lutron panel number one, I have module number one, number two, number four and number five that are phase adaptive module, reference LQSA-4A-D, to be used with all kinds of mains dimmable loads. Then I've got module number three, which is a zero to 10 volt dimming module, reference LQSE-4010-D. And module number six, reference LQSE-4S10-D, which is a switching module used for non-dimmable load. Now, the Lutron modules, also called DPM for General Power Module, 
are always four outputs. That's why the wiring schedule should clearly indicate which circuit exactly is wired to each of those outputs. Then we have the zone name that indicates which lighting circuit is physically connected to the Lutron lighting module. Obviously, I should only have one circuit connected per output if I want that circuit to be controlled independently. We have the load number, also called circuit reference or circuit ID. And these in general represent how the electrician called the circuit and how the circuits are identified on the floor plans or load schedule. And also so how the circuits may be referenced back at the Lutron panel. We have the load type that give us the information for the control method used for each circuit, meaning is the circuit mains dimmable, also called phase dimmable, or is the circuit 0 to 10 volt dimmable, or switch for example. And that can also be extended to fans and motors if we have some on our project. And the last column is a little personal suggestion from my experience as to have some sort of confirmation that those circuits have been checked by the electrician and are ready for commissioning. This is again to make my time on site as effective as possible. So if I know in advance that a circuit has some sort of issue that is beyond my control, I won't have to spend time trying to figure out on my own why this circuit isn't working as expected. I can still build my database and then come back to those circuits once the electrician has addressed the issue. So how do I use the wiring schedule when I commission a Lutron Homeware's QS system? Well, first, I will create the layout of my project using the name of the rooms, either from the description given in the zone name section or by using the lighting floor plan or the load schedule if those are available to me. Here, we can see that we have some rooms called entry hall, office, corridor, kitchen, living, etc, etc. Second, in the Homeworks QS software, I will create the individual circuits as shown here in their relevant rooms with their description. Then, I'll add to the circuits their load number, also called circuit reference or circuit ID. I will also tell the system what their load types are. For example, if they are mains dimmable, 0 to 10 volt dimmable, or switch. The third step will be to create the Lutron panels with their power modules using the correct reference as shown on the wiring schedule. But I could also physically look at the module in the panel myself just to double check. And to finish, the most important step. I will assign each circuit one by one to their specific module output as specified on the wiring schedule. Once I've done that, my Lutron system will know exactly which output to control and what type of signal it needs to deliver to each circuit to operate as expected. Obviously, we will review the detail of each of those steps using the actual Lutron Homeworks QS software in future tutorials. If you have any question, feel free to leave me a comment down below and please like and subscribe to the channel so we can keep you posted when any future video is released. Thank you very much, good luck and talk to you on the next tutorial.